G'day again, welcome back. Um, this time it's going to be a quick one because I'm going on holidays, so I want to get it over and done with. Uh, I mentioned uh, the Vacances Horloger last week, my last video. Um, that's really, I forgot to mention, that's sort of like our Christmas holidays. It's the end of the school year uh, and in the middle of the year in August. And that's why it's a pretty serious holiday and everyone takes time off. So that's what I'm going to do again this, this week, basically. Um, I also want to talk about this watch, the, the Pelagos, my two-liner Pelagos. Same one I had on the last video. I may have changed the strap. I tend to do that a bit. Uh, it's an awesome, iconic watch already now. Tool watch, titanium. It's the version with two lines, which I they call a two-liner. It first came out in 2012, I think. Uh, I got this one in about 13 or 14. Uh, they've obviously launched an, another one or a new one since, a new model, which is a little bit different. The, the new one has five lines of text on the dial instead of two. They've lost this little um, the marker next to the date window. They've taken that off and they have, uh, it's a tiny bit thicker, the, the, the watch for the in-house movement, Rolex movement, which, uh, sorry, two-door movement, Rolex, same thing. 70, 70 hour power reserve movement, but apart from that, not much difference. This is a 38 hour power reserve, and it's an ETA movement, which means I can get it, I can fix it myself, or I can get it fixed by any, any competent watchmaker, can, can work on the, the uh, ETA movement. The in house has to go back to Rolex Service Center, basically. So I like this watch, it's my go to. It's a titanium diver, 500 meter water resistance. I've never been that low. Um, as with any dive watches, you should, should give them a, a quick rinse in, in clean water or um, after you get out of the, the salt water. And I always do that. It's a good idea to do, to keep it, keep it free, keep the bezel free and, and, and keep that corrosion from setting in. Um, uh, what else do I want to talk about? The GPHG, the Grand Prix d'Horlogerie de Genève, GPHG, gphg.org, if you want to look it up. That's like the, uh, the Oscars of the Swiss watchmaking world. It's on in a week, in one month's time, on the 7th of November at is it the Grand Friat in Geneva. I, I used to go to it every year up until I left Switzerland. Um, it's not a fun night, but it's, it's, they take themselves pretty seriously. There's a whole bunch of different prizes given out for... Um, for different categories, and I'll, I'm online here now, I'll just give you an idea what the categories are. Um, there's ladies, there's ladies complications, there's men's watches, men's complications, iconic watches, which means a model from an iconic uh, model line, such as a Royal Oak, or uh, this year they've got, I think they've got Hamilton's, they've got Zenith's, they've got um, that sort of thing where it's, a, it's an old brand, an iconic brand. Chronometry, calendar and astronomy, mechanical exception, mechanical watches, chronographs, Divers watches, jewellery watches, artistic crafts, that can mean anything from parquetry to putting feathers on the dial and, and um, stone cutting and all sorts of different things. Uh, Petit Aiguille, which is I think under 4,000 Swiss francs, the retail price. And then the Challenge, which is under 1,000 I think, Swiss francs. Let me just click on that to check. Um, oh, okay, wrong one. Anyway. There's a whole bunch of categories, and then as well as that, they have industry awards for people who have contributed to the industry, um, special awards for institutions. So it's a kind of a, a dress up night, um, red carpet thing. You can go online and check it out. I just want to mention that now because I don't think I'll be doing, I might not be doing a video before it actually happens. I might do another one. Um, you see all sorts of watches in the, in the pre selection or in, in, in the initial entries, watches which, frankly, Probably shouldn't be there, but uh, anyway, that's that's not up to me to judge. There's a pretty comprehensive jury uh, of, of um, watch experts, bloggers, and uh, you know, some pretty heavy hitters in the industry, basically. Um, a good bunch of people, journalists, some of them, I don't know some of them, but um, you know, all the independent watchmakers are there who I'm always going for, and also obviously the big brands are there as well, most of them. Some of them don't participate, I won't mention any names, but you'll, it becomes pretty clear when you look at the the, the website and the the, uh, the watches on there. Um, so yeah, I'm going to miss it this year again. Doesn't really bother me, 
Um, but it's done on the 7th of November and after that I'll be doing a little quick rundown on the winners basically and um, how they did. And I'm sort of uh, hoping that the, the independents do well, which they, 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 they usually, the last few years they have been, because I've opened up the jury to have more uh, journalists who are quite sympathetic to the independents, so, uh, which has been a good thing. We've always had a few um, get togethers straight after the evening, or we have drinks after the evening. We used to when I was in Switzerland with some of the winners sometimes. We'd always get to chat with the watchmakers, um, guys like um, the Gronfelds won a prize there. Homan Gorchi used to get a few prizes there. Gary Vutilan and all these guys who are um, good friends and I can we always just chat with after the evening. So that's coming up. I'll be missing it obviously. But uh, for now, I'm off on holidays. I'm on the beach, do some diving, snorkeling, reading a bit, a few books. Um, probably not thinking too much about watches. I think I'll have this one with me. Cheers.